Hey guys, did you miss me? I know I'm late and put my videos up, so, so sue me. As you can see, I've been busy. There's all of this. Yes, I've been working on this six liter, and this is the old Big Bang motor, this LY6. It's got a little different camshaft, and it's got a blower cam. Every cam's a turbo cam, except for this one. It's a blower cam. So it's got a blower cam, and it still has a Trick Flow 225 heads in stock bottom end, LY6, extra ring gap. And as we can see, I'll take a walk over here. It's also got a single plane Edelbrock Super Vicar, you know, set up for EFI. That way it's super cool. I also had on it, and I'll take a walk over here. Initially, I had this on there, which is kind of super cool. Had this elbow on there. Da, 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 da. Elbow and a 102 mm real throttle body. A 105 will also fit on there without any problem. So, I had this set up, and as you might notice now, it has a quick fuel carburetor. So, what the heck's going on? Well, I have tales of woe for you. <laughs> so, I went to run this thing last night and spent hours and hours and hours on it, and I could not get it to work. I thought that maybe I forgot everything that I knew about tuning, and maybe I'm not so special after all. Maybe I know nothing. So, after spending a ton of time trying to get the air fuel right and the timing right, and this thing would load okay and, and release at about 3,500 RPM, and then when it got to 4,000 RPM, the power would just take a nose dive. It was terrible. So, I thought, well, there's something that I'm forgetting and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So, I'm gonna wait till the guys come in tomorrow for West Tech. That's today, by the way, for this video. But I'm gonna wait till they come in. I can talk to them. Have them look at it. So I had my buddy Ish come in and help me out. And we spent hours and hours and hours today also doing it, going over the stuff that I thought that I had already checked. So because it wasn't a tuning problem, I figured, well, it's got to be a mechanical problem with the motor. So we did all the usual stuff. We started checking things. I changed plugs, I changed wires, I changed coil packs, we changed sensors, map sensor, we changed crank position sensor. You know, we changed a ton of stuff. We changed the harness. We tried everything that we could. I even took the motor apart. We did a compression test. I checked the rockers, make sure I, you know, hey, did you forget to tighten a rocker? And I say that out of experience because I have done that before. I checked to make sure there were no bent push rods or the spring wasn't broke or that was just, just not something dumb. So it turned out to be none of those things. As it turned out, I had <laughs> somehow, in my infinite wisdom, I gotta switch hands because this thing's getting really heavy. Um, somehow, in my infinite wisdom, I had um, damaged the injector drivers in the Holly ECU. So that's what it turned out to be all along. So what was I gonna do? I did not have a spare ECU, so I thought, okay, I'm not gonna get to run. Luckily for me, we could not get fuel to this motor, but the timing was still working. So I thought, well, you know what? There's a carburetor sitting over there. I'm gonna see if, and that's how we figured out what was going on. There wasn't fuel getting to this motor. So we, what we did was we had, we kept the, the Holly hooked up, had it control the timing, because unfortunately I could run an MSD on here also, and it would work, except that the front cover that I have on this motor doesn't have a provision for the, for the front cam sensor, so I couldn't use the MSD without taking apart the motor. So I didn't want to do that. So we let the Holly on there, and put a carburetor on there. Voila, the motor was like all happy. Hey, finally I have some fuel. It's about time you idiots gave me some fuel. Now I get to make power and I'm all happy because I have fuel and timing and I have the right amount of both and I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to. It's about time you bunch of idiots. So we finally gave it some fuel and the motor is just in perfect shape. It works great. Once we got the air fuel right and we had the timing right, it made a bunch of power. It made 550 horsepower. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and let you take a look at that run right now. We can take a look at the dyno run, the NA run, and then we're gonna take a look and see what happened after we added the blowers, because this is all about boost, right? Take a look. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed our NA run. Thing sounds good, it was happy. Carbureted, had the right uh, timing and everything. It was working good. But after that, I decided, you know what? Sitting over there all alone by itself is a new quick fuel 
E85, and by the way, we ran the NA motor on E85 with an E85 Holley carburetor, and I'm going to show you some pictures of that stuff, because West Tech had an E85 Holley carburetor, and that worked out good. I like to use E85, one, because it's really, really cheap. Um, you know, it's even cheaper than just buying pump gas. So the E85 is cheap, and I wanted to try the E85 blow-through carburetor. So we've tried the NA E85 carburetor from West Tech. That's how we ran the NA motor. You'll notice it's got that, that uh, Ultra XP deal on it, and that worked good. And so after that, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna run the blow through stuff anyway. Even if I don't have fuel injection, I'm gonna run the two Torque Storm superchargers. Let's take a look at those. Look at that one. There's one. There's two. And as you can see, I also install an air to water intercooler. So now a lot of guys gotta be thinking, hey, you're running the 85, you don't need an intercooler. You're running a blow through carburetor. You don't need an intercooler. And guess what? All of you are right. So what? I did it anyway. <laughs> and actually the reason that I did it, one, I always like to run intercoolers on blower stuff or turbo stuff anyways, but the reason that I did it is because I had two torque storms. See, I had one, I had two, but I only had one inlet going into the carburetor. See, like right here. Whoa, into the bonnet, into the carburetor. Running the intercooler actually allowed me to solve that problem because this particular intercooler from CX Racing, as you can see here, was a dual inlet and a single outlet, which worked out great. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that up. Somebody's trying to send me messages while I'm doing a video. How rude. Um, so that solved a problem for me. It's just kind of a packaging deal. Plus, you know, more cooling is always better. So we had <laughs> three forms of cooling. One, we had a blow through carburetor, which cools the air. Two, we had the 85, which cools the air. And we had the intercooler, which also cools the air. So I went in and put the E85 blow through carburetor from Quick Fuel up there. And then we configured the intercooler, you know, install the blowers and everything. Had the dual packaging there. One thing I want to point out, take a look at this. Okay, right here, I hope you guys can see. Right here, see this brace right here? Look from the top side also. Take a look at this right here, this bracket. Okay, the, the dual torque storm kit was actually designed to be run with the factory water pump. But as you can see, we are running a Mazir electric water pump. So unfortunately, it doesn't have the same kind of mounting bracket for the factory tensioner. So I needed to come, out, come up with a way to basically triangulate the mounting plate because I wanted to have two bolts or three bolts holding it. So all I did was just drill and tap the back plate, run one all the way through where it were supposed to attach to the water pump, and boom, it's all good. So we, we had no problems, we had no belt slippage, everything worked out great with the blowers. Look at that, wah, wah, wah. So we hooked, we hooked up the quick fuel carburetor, put that on, and started tuning. Unfortunately, one of the problems that we ran into with this particular combination, and I don't know if, if anybody else has used these quick fuel blow-through carburetors, especially the E85 stuff, let me know, because we've run a lot of blow-through carburetors and, and really not had issues, but on this particular carburetor, we basically couldn't get enough fuel to this combination. Every, I mean, we threw the kitchen sink at it, and I had Brule here, who's the carb whisperer, so this guy's legendary when it comes to carburetors. But we did everything. We put, we, and we ended up taking the jets out of the carburetor. No jets. We, the carburetor was also shipped with no power valve in the secondary, so we put a power valve in the secondaries. We, <laughs> we also put the smallest air bleeds we could possibly find, and then we just capped them off. We put toothpicks in them. That's right, I said toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> we basically just filled the holes. Uh, we, Steve also took the carburetors apart and drilled passages to get more fuel to it. But no matter what we did, everything that we did added a little bit of fuel. But unfortunately, on the run you're about to see when we made the big power, um, we still were trending toward lean. So it started out at a nice safe air fuel, but unfortunately it ends up around 13 to 1 out of the top at 6,000 RPM, which is why I shut the run off there. I didn't want to run any higher. It's 13 to 1. It's 15 pounds boost, <laughs> and that's not a safe place to be. I did it because I had to make a video and I had to run the test, but I don't think that I would do it again. But here, you guys take a look at the, at the supercharged run, listen to this thing, run in anger, it did, it did really good. Check it out, and I'll get right back to you.
Okay guys, what'd you think? It sounds pretty pissed off, huh? It, it was ready to go. I mean, it was climbing at a rate of about 20 horsepower. I'll go ahead and put the curve up and stuff. You guys can take a look at that. But it was climbing at a rate of about 20 horsepower for every 100 RPM. So it was on, you know, it was on a mission. We were only at 6,000. The motor has easily been run to 7,000 before. So there's plenty of power left. You could make a lot more power with this thing. And the two superchargers, each one of them I've made over 700 horsepower with. So they'll support a lot of power. The boost was climbing. You know, everything was working good. If we could just get more fuel to it. Um, we thought about putting, I've got a water mess system on it. We've tried about putting that on and just spraying E85. We thought about putting a nitrous plate on it and just spraying fuel to it. We could do all that, but it makes more sense for me just to wait and see, um, maybe get a different E85 carburetor or better yet, I'm just gonna wait till I get my Holley HP uh, ECU replaced and they'll run it with fuel injection because I had 160 pound injectors you know, more than enough for what we're trying to do. And we weren't trying to make a big number. I mean, it made 1,014, so it's certainly capable of making big power. Plus, and I know I'm gonna get these comments, and I want you guys to make the comments, please do. I, I'm gonna get a comment from all the wrecking yard, you know, junkyard LS guys that are gonna say, yeah, I can make that kind of power for $300. And that's all great, and I obviously, I know that that's the case because I have lots of junkyard motors, and that's kind of one of the things that I do. But the problem is that, that's not for everybody. Lots of guys want the thing to look different, to be cool. They want superchargers, they don't want turbos. Whatever their deal is, I'm just showing you what else is possible. This thing's definitely possible and four digit power levels, no problem. Plus, you get two superchargers. What can be better than that? Come on guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, help me out. I'm gonna keep testing. I'll probably revisit this thing, but guess what? The other problem is, because I don't have a Holly ECU, I can't run the 4.8 liter uh, sloppy stage two versus the world test. I can't do my VS racing test. I can't do any of that stuff until I get into Holly. Thanks for watching, guys.